Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the educational code forces round 148 that was rated for DEF 2. So we'll be going through the first three problems that is new palindrome, maximum sum and contrast value. I won't be going through the problem D1 because I wasn't able to solve it myself and apparently I'm stupid enough. So let's move ahead to problem A. So the problem A is fairly simple. So what they're saying is that they have provided you with a string S, right? And that is for sure a palindrome. So string S is a palindrome. Now what you have to do is we can rearrange the letters and we have to make another palindrome from it which obviously shouldn't be this uh, shouldn't be similar with the initial uh, string itself right if we can make another palindrome then we have to print a yes else we have to print a no so yeah this is the uh, this is the problem now how would we do it so right over here what we can observe is that in what cases we cannot construct a different palindrome what from what's given to us so one case is with, wherein all the digits you have is similar right so if you have all a's no matter how you arrange it it's all uh, always gonna be all a's right so this is one scenario wherein you cannot make it the second scenario is that let's say you have some a's and there's a single b and then there are a's right so b is uh, at the very middle there are x number of a's over here and x number of a's over here even in this case because there's only one occurrence of b so this it's not possible for you to rearrange it right so these are two cases wherein you cannot construct a new palindrome We'll just check for these two cases. Now, how we'll check? There are multiple ways of doing it. I'll be explaining one of the ways of that. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm using a set wherein I'm putting the entire string. Now, what this would do is since set contains unique characters, so I'll technically know how many different characters are there. Now, if there are only one, uh, if this uh, if the entire string is made up of a single character, that means there's no way to make a new palindrome. So in that case, we can directly print a no. If it has three or more characters, that means there would be some sort of permutation, right? Because the only way when we won't be able to make a palindrome is this particular case, right? If it has uh, like uh, two characters, then only this uh, this case arises. If it has more than uh, more than three or three characters, then this case won't won't arise, and uh, obviously first case won't arise either. So even in that case, the answer would be yes. Else, what I'll do is I'll count the number of unique characters. So I'll co uh, count it for C1 and C2. If either one of them is one, that basically means there would be an element at the middle. Right. If that's the case, I'll print a no. Else, I'll print a yes. You can try running it. It definitely works, and this is a valid solution. So let's move to the second problem. So this is the second problem. So the problem's name is maximum sum. What the problem states is that we have been given with the array a. Now what we can do is we can from a uh, from that given array, at any time we can either remove the maximum element, or we can remove the minimum elements from it. Right. The thing is that uh, we have to perform this operation exactly k times. So if you think about it, if you are having this particular array, let's say 2, 5, 1, 10, 6. Now, if I say that, okay, remove one element, then you can either remove one and two from it because these are two uh, minimum elements in this, or you can use, remove a 10. And the remaining uh, array that would be left after uh, doing this operation k number of times, we need to print the sum for it. So for example, in this case, the sum was 21 and how was the sum 21 so over they are saying that if we remove 1 and 2 from over here then we get a sum 21 if we remove a 10 from it that is the maximum element then we get a sum 14 since we have to maximize the sum hence the answer is 21 now how would we do it uh, this is also a fairly simple question and uh, just requires a basic intuition so what we can see over here is that let's say this is our array right and let's sort it so let's reverse sort it maybe so if we refer sort it, then these are the biggest elements. Now let's assume that these are the elements that I want to include. These are the elements, right? So there would be some elements to the right of it that I'm not including into my array. Now, how many elements are these going to be? Now, since I already told that we have reverse sorted it or we have sorted it in descending order, that basically means these are the smallest elements, right? These are the smallest elements. If I want to remove these elements from my array, then basically its count would be 2 into k right so 2 into k elements would be over here which i have removed and i've only kept the largest elements right now let's say uh, i want to remove one of the elements from this area so this some i already know this i can get in order of n that's not a problem right now at least right i can get this in order of n and now i want to check that uh, what's the other area i can get so one uh, uh, next possibility would be let's say there were some elements over here which i had not initially considered Right now, I can say I'm going to remove this element. That is the maximum element I'm having right now. Right, and instead of this, now I can 
accommodate two more elements right because i'm removing a uh, initially i said that i'm going to use uh, k operations in k operation i'm going to remove the smallest elements right and now if i'm i'm saying that okay i'm fine with removing one of the greatest elements that basically means i now can accommodate two elements more right because in one uh, one step you could have either removed two greater elements two greater else or oh, sorry uh, two smaller elements or one greater element right so initially we were considering that we are removing all the smaller elements now if we say that okay i'm going to remove one greater element so instead of that we can add two smaller right so i'll remove this i already know the sum for this so i can subtract the sum sum minus is equal to let's say area array of left because this is the left limit right and instead of that now i can add two elements that are over here right so i'll add this and i'll add this makes sense and let's say this was the limit r this was r right so i can say I, i'll add array of r plus 1 and l i'll add array of r plus 2 i'll keep doing it so this would technically become a sliding window the only uh, difference would be that sliding window is most of the time constant so this is your uh, so basically the way sliding window works is that let's say this is your array right so your sliding window would okay let's just mark some points like this right so your sliding window would be over here then it will keep continuing something of this sort right so it keeps moving like this the only difference over here is that now your sliding window as it moves via step 1 to the right or uh, as its left limit moves via step 1 right as soon as this becomes the limit then its size increases by 2 right so to the right it engulfs two more elements to it i hope this logic was clear let's look at the implementation the implementation is simple for this so yeah, uh, what i'm doing is firstly i'm reverse sorting it as stated now i'm going to say that what is the array that i'm going to consume so the array is good, uh, would be represented by uh, l is equal uh, l is equal to 0 that is the leftmost element to r minus uh, n minus 2 into k so basically this is the rightmost limit right and over here you should uh, understand that i'm saying that array of l comma k, r is there so this is a round bracket that basically means that rth element or the n minus 2 into kth element is not included for example over here let's say k was equal to 1 then i would have said n minus 2 right so basically the n minus 2 element won't have been included because if you know we are using zero based indexing and n uh, n minus 2 and n minus 1 are the respective last elements so these two elements are not include, included right now i'll take the sum so i'll use the stl functionality for that i'll take the sum so and after that i'll start traversing till the time my r is less than n minus 1 now why n minus 1 over here because i at least want two elements uh, to be that to the right uh, to the right of me right so rest is fairly simple as i already stated that you will add the two elements to the right you will increment right as well and then you'll uh, subtract the element to the left of you or to your extreme left and you'll update your rest if you are getting a better sum right now and then you'll print it so if i run it it works yeah now let's move to the last problem for the day uh, the last problem is contrast value the problem states that for an integer of array a1 up to uh, a1 a2 a3 up to so on an right let's call the value a1 minus a2 plus a2 minus a3 all of these are absolute terms right uh, to be the uh, contrast of the array and they have also said that the Uh, then the contrast of a, uh, an array of size one is actually zero. So that would basically mean that if you are having an array with only one element, now there is no way you can subtract another element from it because you are having a single element, right? So in that case, its contrast is zero. Now we have to uh, print. Uh, we don't even have to print the array. We just need to tell that what would be the size of the minimum array possible, right? Which has the same contrast as that of array A. Now how would we do it? A very simple observation can help over there. although the implementation is a bit tricky not like too very hard but yeah a bit tricky as it's possible to do it uh, in the wrong fashion but the concept is fairly simple so what uh, they are stating the contrast to be a1 minus uh, okay a1 minus a0 plus a2 minus a1 plus a3 minus a2 a3 minus a2 yep so on to right now what you can observe is that your a1 minus a0 
right plus a2 minus a1 that technically becomes a2 minus a0 if and only if or i'll just put that uh, in absolute terms this becomes this if and only if you have a single kind of a slope now what do i mean by that now let's say your uh, this is your graph right here you have a 1 and here you have a 2 you have a 3 right? over here right now if i say 3 minus 2 minus 1 right or i can say 3 minus 2 plus 2 minus 1 this technically becomes equal to 3 minus 1 right because you can say that okay, i'm having a minus 1 over here and a plus 2 over here or oh, sorry minus 2 over here and a plus 2 over here i can cancel them out so eventually i'm left with the n terms so basically if you are having any number of elements which are either in the increasing order or in the decreasing order right then you can club them together so if there are n elements or there are x elements in this particular line so you are having let's say 1 followed by a 3 maybe like 4 then a 10 then a 15 so you can club them together so the entire uh, contrast as they said over here the entire contrast would actually be given by 15 minus 1 so the minimum number of elements required to represent this contrast is actually 15 minus 1 right cool enough now we, uh, we know that fact but how is this, fa uh, this fact useful for us so since we had to print the minimum number of elements required to print this contrast so we can say okay uh, only two elements would be re uh, required to represent this but wait what would happen in case of a declining graph the same thing would happen now let's say here was 15 here was 10 maybe 6 maybe 5 maybe 1 right so you can also represent this contrast by 15 minus 1 right but you observe one thing over here you'll say that okay i need a 1 then i need a 15 so as to represent this right but in order to represent this entire thing you'll only need one now because 15 is already there right so that is one observation also whenever you'll be having consecutive elements that are actually same so technically they are not adding anything to the contrast right so since they are not adding anything to the contra contrast you have to ignore them and that's it that's it for this question uh, i'll try to explain the code also although i don't feel that the code is pretty neat i just wrote it for the contest it works but it's not that neat per se so what i'm doing is if your n is equal to one then your answer is obviously one because your answer cannot be zero and I can return it then and there itself. I took a, a, a element earlier. Now that's not required. Cool. And then I'm saying that I'll start from the very left. So basically left lim uh, limit, which is actually zero. I'm going to start from that. And then I'm going to see that if all the elements I'm observing, if they're same, right? Then as I said, they don't add anything to the contrast. So it's better to ignore them. So I'm going to ignore all of these elements. Now it's possible that all the elements were same. I came till the, till the last right so now there's no point in checking further so my answer obviously is one because the contrast actually is zero so answer answer would be one over here i can return now i'm gonna say whether the next term is greater than me or not so gt is basically greater than so if your next term is greater than then it would be true else it would be false and this is the results i'm setting so initially it is one because you at least require one element to start with okay element to start with right then what I'm going to say is the uh, same thing I'm going to do that till that I'm getting same elements, keep incrementing it because I'm going to ignore them anyway. Right. And now if, uh, if I've reached the end, right, if my i is equal to n minus one, then I can break. Okay. If greater than, so if I'm saying, uh, currently if the last set was greater than, so basically that mean, uh, meant I was having a ascending graph. And currently you see a opposite trend. So now if the next element is smaller than the current element, in that case, there's a trend, trend reversal or there's a line reversal. So basically something of this sorts that you were going up earlier and now you're starting going down. That basically means you'll require one more element that is exactly over here, right? This is something you're gonna go use. So if that's the case, then you're gonna say it is plus plus, right? And uh, if it's uh, if the uh, if earlier you're not having a greater pattern but now you are having that so if earlier you were having something less than and now the next element is greater than you then also you are having a trend reversal that would be the opposite of what we discussed something of this sort right so you were going down earlier or this was less than right and now you're going up so even in this case you are going to say that okay uh, now greater than is equal to one because now there is a trend reversal and you are going to increment your uh, result right at the very end, just print rest plus one. Now, why plus one over here? That's weird, right? The plus one is just because you're going to conclude it somewhere, right? So 
we said that okay we are going to start somewhere that was obvious right and then we also said that okay we are going to reach over here but then when it comes comes down right you are also have to terminate it so this is basically to terminate it and yeah that's it that's it for the problem i hope you understood it and you enjoyed the solutions thanks very, uh, thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye